in Fergo Quinn's Retail Therapy tonight at half past eight, but now Shortland Street. It's okay, I'm a doctor. We are nurses, Bex, can you help? I'll call an ambulance. Now you're going to chuck it all away. Brave man, I didn't have the guts. Medicine's my life, okay? It took me a while, but I got there in the end. So tell me there's a job for me, Kiss. Have you checked out work anywhere else? Nope. Picked up a medical journal while you've been off? No. I was making up my mind. But playing golf? There is one training position available at the primary care clinic. The GP scheme? Yes. I'll take it. Now what? Do you really want it? Yeah, of course. No, TK, do you really, really want the job? Or is it just going to fall into your lap so you'll take it? Man, you're mean. I wonder why. Okay, so I made some mistakes on my first Eddie rotations. I learned from them. If I put you up for the job, then you better give me one hell of an assurance that you're going to stick to it like glue, because I'm telling you this time round there will be no second chances. Okay, I'll be good, I promise. <sighs> Fill that out and get it back to me. I have to admit, I was at the top of my game and TK was nowhere near his. Still, it comes so close. So, what have we got? Uh, Lewis Dayton. Scheduled for surgery tomorrow. Adenoma has already had a partial proctectomy. Obviously, they didn't reset deep enough. Well, I'm not surprised. You're right in the middle of the facial nerves. Blow it, you're in big trouble. Anyway, now he's got two tumours wrapped around the parotid gland. Well, removing them will be highly risky. That's why they referred him to you. You've aced other nerve surgery that was just as tricky. Yeah, I think I'm better qualified to judge the level of risk. I very much doubt it's worth it. For his quality of life, surely it is. You're pretty much his only chance. Hey, you still here? <laughs> yeah, applying for a job. Really? Doing what? Um, keeping. Hey, good idea. I think so. Yeah, definitely. It's much more your style. Like how? Well, it's a whole lot cruisier than ED and the hours are probably better too. Right, and that's what I'm good at, cruising through and slacking off. Did I say that? Well, that's what you meant. Get over yourself and go for the job. You'll be great. You can blame Mum for driving Jay away, but you know why she did it. Do I? Because she loves you. Libby, why are you here? Why are you doing my dishes? Because I'm hygiene obsessed and you're not making any effort. Look at you. Put some lippy on. Mm, yeah, that will make me feel better. Could you just go away and micromanage someone else's life? Not until you tell me you'll forgive Mum and start talking to her again. You're breaking her heart. Will you st stop that? When you stop mucking around and start talking to me? What are you doing? I'm internet stalking. What? I'm tracking Jay through her credit card. Our credit card, actually. No, that's sick. I have a right to know what she's doing with my money. Look, a taxi from the airport into Sydney, plus a couple of restaurants, and she's obviously not eating by herself. She's picking up the bill for someone else, even though when I called all our friends over there, none of them had seen her. And look, a rental car to Byron Bay. I wonder who she went there with. Another friend? I know who. Someone who spends half his time in Australia on business. Maya, don't do this to yourself. Tell me she's not there with Dylan then. Convince me. Uh, stop right there, Buster. You just beat my husband at golf. Oh, you're gonna gun me down, not here. Too many witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> the mental health of my family, mine, mostly, was in your hands and you have so blown it. Yeah, I have a bit of trouble with losing. I would have paid you to lose. <laughs> I need that holiday. I'm sorry. <laughs> so when are you gonna start being famous? Uh, it's not really having anything. I'm going back to doctoring. Applying for a place here as a GP. Oh, I thought you were into the whole golf pro thing. I could see you living that lifestyle. It's very you. Right, cruising through. That's me. Oh, I didn't mean that. That's what everyone thinks. Oh, TK, are they picking on you? See, you don't even take me seriously. <laughs> like, you're a single guy with no commitments, like kids or a mortgage. That's all they're going on about. It's no big deal. They're just jealous. Don't worry about it.
Much up to? Nothing much. I just saw TK. He's changed his mind. He's applying for a job here. Well, what happened to the golf bazaar? I think he's decided to stop being Peter Pan and grow up. <laughs> Tell him to get a mortgage, that'll do it. Yeah, drink your coffee while it's hot. Oh, yeah. What's all this? Oh, it's a case I might take on. That's complicated. Yeah, it is. Very. Could be a good way of getting back on the horse. I don't know. On the one hand, I've got Mark wittering on about saving the guy, and on the other, there's a whole lot of factors. <sighs> Chris Warner loses his nerve, gives up medicine, and retires to the country to grow olives. Do that, mate, and I'll divorce you. What, give up medicine? No, grow olives. <laughs> you haven't lost your nerve, you've just been careful. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't perform miracles, Chris. So if you're pressuring yourself to prove something, don't. Just look at the case on its merits, be objective. Easier said than done. All right, then. First, do no harm. She's sitting at home, glued to the laptop, looking like the bride of Dracula. Exaggeration. I am not exaggerating. She looks terrible. And as for this obsession with where Jay is and how much money she's spending... I don't blame Maya one little bit. Joint account or not, some of that money was left to Maya by her father. And you tell me what right Jay has, after all that she has done, to touch a penny of it. Yeah, well, she is broke. And whose fault is that? Who's the little hussy that put money before everything else? OK, cyber-stalking her is getting a little bit out there. At this rate, she'll be in therapy in any minute. Oh, don't be ridiculous. The only help she needs is from the people that she trusts. That's her family. You mean me and Libby? She's not even talking to you. Oh, I couldn't care less about that. As long as Maya is all right, and it's up to you two to make sure that she is. She's not exactly what you'd call sociable at the moment, Mum. Oh, for goodness sake, just get round there and do something. Cheer her up. How are you feeling? Uh, looking forward to getting these things taken out of my neck. <clears throat> they tell me it's central. You're the hot shot. He is. You're in excellent hands, Mr. Dayton. Got a consent form? I'm ready to sign. We'll hold on to that for a second. Did the surgeon at Central fully explain what the surgery entails? Well, I didn't understand half of what he said to tell you the truth. But as far as I'm concerned, you guys can do what you like. As long as I come out of this with a pulse, and these tumors gone. Okay, from my point of view, I'm not doing my job properly unless I paint the whole picture for you, including very significant risks. Okay, let's go for it. When we remove the tumours, what we do is, in effect, traumatise the facial nerve. It means for a few days after the operation, your face will be paralysed. Yeah, well, that doesn't worry me. What I'm dealing with is extremely delicate tissue and nerve endings. And if I strike any unforeseen problems, there is the risk of permanently damaging the facial nerve. Now, if that occurs, it can result in permanent paralysis of one side of your face. And you could lose your sense of taste. Uh, yeah, that's what they told me down at Central. Do you know what I do? No. I work in the wine business. 50% of the time I'm tasting wine for clients. If I can't taste, I'm down the drain. I see. Let's cover all the bases, starting with your medical history. Well, we did that down at Central. Yeah, I know. I've read your file. I want to hear it from you. Hey, baby.